Good evening. I'm Dan Livney, current president of GJC, and this is my Kol Nidre address. I started it back in 2019, and I'm embarrassed to say that it's still not finished. But I have a good excuse, and with the best of intentions, I really did. But you'll never believe what happened. There was this pandemic, and with the elections coming up, I got backed up. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll just tell you exactly what happened. I started by sitting down with a blank piece of paper and an inspirational quote. The quote was by John Cage, the great 1960s avant-garde artist, who said, I have nothing to say, and then I say it, and that is poetry. And then I looked down at my blank piece of paper, and I realized I'd been lied to. But feeling that I couldn't just come to you all empty-handed, I wrote down this story. One Sunday night, not long ago, we all sat down, Melissa Boas, Ezra, and I, to watch a family movie. We decided on an American tale. Perhaps some of you may recall this mid-1980s animated film from Steven Spielberg about a family of mice who, victimized by pogroms in which the Cossack aggressors are played by cats, make an emigration journey to America. The father tries to give hope and solace to his worried family by instructing them that there are no cats in America. Along their traumatic storm-tossed journey, Fievel, the young mouse, gets separated from his family who proceed on to the land where the streets are said to be paved with cheese, and eventually they reach America without him. As I'm watching this movie, I find myself resonating back to a story that is part of my own family's biography. We left the Soviet Union in 1972, with myself then less than a year old. The family was making Aliyah to Israel. In the midst of preparations, a rumor had sprung up which said that even after all of the travails that aspiring immigrants had to go through, applying to the Soviet bureaucracy, suffering job losses, KGB interrogations, and sometimes worse, that at the last moment at the border, so went this rumor, families were being allowed to leave, but their children were being kept behind. In a panic, my uncle attempted to come to the rescue. He offered to my parents to keep me with him as they emigrated so that I would not be left a ward of the Soviet state. My parents declined, taking a risk, and the separation obviously did not occur. Whether or not the rumor was true is irrelevant. One could count on the Soviet regime for nothing except to be capricious and malicious. If this particular threat turned out to not be true, many other things like it were. As I'm watching this movie about family separation, about a desire for a place one could breathe free without cats, and the search for reunion as Fievel and his family scour the city for each other, and how they simultaneously are trying to eke out a home for themselves in their new land, I'm watching my children watching this movie, children who have grown up in this country and know of nothing else. Largely, Jews as a community of the American diaspora have succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. But the feelings of fragility around connection persists. And as I'm watching my children learn about their history, to my surprise, I find myself tearing up, crying. And why, besides the fact that I'm crying over a cartoon about mice? But really, it was because in that moment, I was seeing their world by way of contrast. I would not be here without my parents' difficult immigration story. My children would not be here without my own challenges with integration. And that ultimately what all of this means to me, they will experience differently. And I could not possibly anticipate how they will come to see either myself or their heritage in years to come. I was thinking too about what do I want them to know and what does raising essentially Jewish American children mean to me? Why am I telling you this story on Kol Nidre Night? Because there is a theme, there is a thread, a thread that reaches through Fievel and the millions he represents, through the family Livni, nay, born Fivosovich, my original last name, meaning as it happened, son of Fievel, a common Russian Jewish name, both for me and apparently for Russian Jewish mice. And this thread leads on through Ellis Island and other ports of entry through to the Germantown Jewish Center of 1936, to the decision led by Rabbi Chari for GJC to remain in Mount Airy rather than fleeing to the suburbs, a decision that has been a touchstone for many, and a thread that travels through to this community in this virtual room 
tonight. And that theme is belonging. Recently, I was reading Simon Shama's History of the Jews, in which he notes the tension that exists between one's connection to Judaism and Jewish culture on the one hand, and integration with the larger world on the other, which is a hallmark of living in the diaspora. Shama dates this peculiar tension back at least to the Egyptian Jewish outpost of Elephantine around 500 BC. So this isn't a new problem that I'm identifying. But I would suggest that the idea of what it does mean to belong has something to do with finding a critical balance between our connections to that which we consider our own in the form of Judaism, family, and community to be balanced with respect to our larger world within which we reside and to which we must find a way to relate. One of the many losses of our community that our community has experienced over the past year has been that of past president Paul Minkoff. I did not have the chance to get to know Paul well, but I have a vivid recollection of him approaching me one day by the stairs near the main entry doors, if you can remember where that is, and telling me about Cherry's decision to stay in the neighborhood and how meaningful that was to him. For me, one of the lessons of that decision is in what it says about a strength of this community, the ability to struggle to find that balance Shama writes about. We struggle with it when we become allies of our local churches and mosques and take care of the immigrant and homeless families, while also providing comfort to our own members in the form of support groups, Zoom services, B'nai mitzvahs and funerals and shivas, as we have done over the period of this too long pandemic. We struggle with it when we seek to expand the meaning of belonging within our own virtual walls by striving towards becoming an anti-racist community. For me, it takes both of those sides, not just one, to create a meaningful, meaningful sense of the idea of belonging. Without knowing the individual histories, I'm able to presume that for every single person hearing me speak somewhere, in some way, somehow, there is a fival and also these questions. Do we belong and how do we belong? Because belonging is not only a passive form, it is not only what happens externally. For me, it is an active, ongoing process. We are not only granted belonging, although as an eternal minority that is inevitably part of the story, we also create it. Every Shabbat dinner that we share, every moment when the children play together on Zoom, more appropriately distance, of course, every teaching that is imparted, every Torah reading chanted, every sick visit or shiva that is sat, and every Kal Nidre and Yom Kippur when we all come together, even on Zoom or in whatever way is available, each one of these is a profound act of creation, a creation of the possibility of belonging. And if it is profound, it is so because we cannot be aware of it without also being aware of its history. It is so because we know that it is fragile, and it is so because we know that it takes work to maintain it. Uh, so where was I? Oh, yes. Now is the traditional time in the Kol Nidre address when the president delivers a joke in order to smooth over the awkwardness of asking you for money. Fortunately, I'm not going to do that this year, in part because I've never been any good at telling jokes. What I'm going to ask of you instead is to help me finish this unfinished speech because I cannot do it without you. If belonging is something that we share together, then it must be something that we must build together. As Jews, we all share something. Is it history, belief, ethics, faith, perhaps just a willingness to argue about what it is that we in fact do share or don't. The greater Jewish story is so filled with misstep, tragedy, comedy, and pratfall. At times I've thought of Judaism, not as a race or a religion or, or an ethnicity, but as a sophisticated system for apprehending irony. In any case, what I am inviting you to consider is that the High Holiday Appeal is just one vital part of the greater act of belonging. It is a gift you give to yourself. When you donate to GJC, you're not buying a service, not really. You are actually playing an active part in so many things it is difficult to list them all. Your donation doesn't, can't buy belonging. What it does do is enable all of the staff, religious services, building maintenance needs, support services, educational, children's, musical, and community programs 
most of which have been on full throttle, even and perhaps especially so in this time of pandemic. Our goal for Col Nidre for this year is $157,000, $157,500. And we have already outraised this amount. Our latest total is $179,130. That is better than 85% of our way to the final total goal for the high holiday appeal, which is 210,000. I am just beyond proud and grateful to everyone who has donated so far. I am also deeply aware that the injustices of this pandemic have not struck equally. If you are able to give as generously or more so than in previous years, then your gifts will be greatly appreciated. And I would like to invite you to join Melissa and me in increasing our contribution by 10%. If you cannot, then please know that how many of our members contribute counts as much as the amount that they do. If you can afford $18, please don't discount it because we surely won't. Every donation matters, no matter the amount. If you'd like an additional incentive, this year, one of our congregants has anonymously granted $20,000 in matching funds to support all of our efforts. The conditions of these matching funds are as follows. If you've never donated before, then any new gift will be matched 10 times. I'm going to repeat that because you can't have heard that right 10 times. Any gift will be matched 10 times. So if you've never donated and this year you donate $18, GJC will receive matching funds of $180. Additionally, if you are able to double your gift this year compared to previous years, that gift will be matched dollar for dollar. So if you gave 18 last year and you increase your donation to 36 this year, GJC will receive an additional $36 in matching funds. Dear community, when times are tough, what we do is we hold on tighter to and we take care of that which we hold dear. So please join me by giving to the High Holiday Appeal so that together we can participate in bringing ourselves closer into and building onto the strength of this community. And I will finally be able to consider this call Nidre address finished. From my family, wishing you and your families a warm and healthy and a meaningful Shana Tova and Gmar Hatimatova.